Greetings and welcome to the literature of Skyrim. I am your dear host, Mergloth. Today I shall be reading of Chance's Folly. Chance's Folly by Three Yimlock Golge. By the time she was sixteen, Minerva Lolos had been an unwelcome guest in every shop and manor in Balmora. Sometimes she would take everything of value within, other times it was enough to experience the pure pleasure of finding a way past the locks and traps. In either situation she would leave a pair of dice in a prominent location as her culling card to let other let the owners know who had burgled them. The mysterious ghost became known to the locals as Chance. A typical conversation in Balmora at this time. My dear, whatever happened to that marvelous necklace of yours? My dear, it was taken by chance. The only time when chance disliked her hobby was when she miscalculated, and she came upon an owner of a guard. So far, she had never been caught, or even seen but dozens of times she had been uncomfortably close encounters. There came a day when she felt it was time to expand her reach, and she considered going to Vivek or Genesis. But one night at the Eight Plates she heard a tale of a heron ancestral tomb, an ancient tomb filled with traps and possessing hundreds of years of heron family treasures. The idea of breaking the spell from the heron tomb and gaining the fortune within appealed to chance, but facing the guardians was outside of her experience. While she was considering her options, she saw Ulstil and Morsby sitting at a table nearby, by himself as usual. He was huge, brute of a Breton who had a reputation as a gentle eccentric a great warrior who had gone mad and paid more attention to the voices in his heads than the world around him. If she must have a partner in this enterprise, Chance decided this man would be perfect. He would not demand or understand the concept of getting an equal share of the booty. If worse came to worse, he would not be missed if the inhabitants of the Heron Tomb were too much for him. Or if by chance he found his company tiresome and elected to leave him behind. Ulster, I don't think we've m ever met, but my name is Minerva, she said, approaching the table. I'm fancying a trip to the Heron Ancestral Tomb. If you think you could handle the monsters, I could take care of unlocking doors and popping traps. What do you think? The Breton took a moment to reply as if considering the counsel of the voices in his head. Finally, he nodded his head in affirmation, or affirmative mumbling. Yes, yes, yes. Proper rock, hot steel, chitin, walls beyond doors. Fifty-three, two months and back. Splendid, said Chance, not the least put off by his rambling. We'll leave early tomorrow. When Chance met Ulster the next morning, she was wearing chitin armor and had armed herself with the unusual blade that glowed faintly of enchantment. As they began their trek, she in tried to engage him in conversation, but his responses were so nonsensical that she quickly abandoned the attempt. A sudden rainstorm swelled over the plain, dousing them. But as she was wearing no armor and Ulstir was wearing slick chitin, their progress was not impeded. Into the dark recesses of the heron tomb they delved. Her instincts had been correct. They had they made very good partners. She recognized the ancient snap wire traps, deadfalls and brittle backs before they were triggered, and cracked all manners of lock, simple tumbler, combination, twisted hasp double catch varieties in antiquity with no modern names. Rusted heaps that would have been dangerous to open if, even if one possessed the actual key. 
Ostia for his part slew scores of bizarre fiends, the likes of which chance a city girl had never seen before. His enchanted blade spells of fire was particularly effective against the frost on Shrenox. He even saved her when she lost her footing and nearly plummeted into a shadowy crack in the floor. Not to hurt thyself, he said, his face showing genuine concern. There are walls beyond doors in fifty-three, drain ring two months and back. Drop a rock, come, Mother Chance. Chance had not been listening to much of Ustia's babbling, but when he said Chance, she was startled. She had, in she had introduced herself as Minerva. Could it be that the peasant were right, and that when mad men spoke they were talking to the Daedra Prince of... To the Deidre Prince Siergorf, who gave them advice and information beyond their ken? Or was it... Rather more sensible that Ulstir was merely repeating what he heard tell of the inn in Balmuro, where in recent years chance had become synonymous with lockpicking. As the two continued on, chance thought of Ulstir's mumblings. He had said chitin when they had met it, when they met as if it had occurred to him, and that the chitin armor would be a armor that he wore had proven useful. Likewise, hot steel, what could walls beyond doors mean? Or two months and back, what numbered fifty-three? The notion that Ulstir possessed secret knowledge about her in the tomb they were they were and began to unnerve chance. She made up her mind then to abandon her companion once the treasure had been found. She had cut through the living and the undead guardians of the dungeon. If she merely left the path they had entered, she would be safe without a defender. One phrase he said made perfect sense to her. Drain ring. At one of the Balm at one of at one of the manors in Balmore, she had picked up a ring purely because she had thought it was pretty. It was not later that until it was not till later that she discovered that it could be used to sap other people's vitality. Could Ulstir be aware of this? Would he be taken by surprise if she used it on him? She formulated her plan on how best to desert the Breton as they continued down the hall. Abruptly, the passage ended with a large metal door secured by a golden lock. Using her pick, Chance snapped away the two tumblers and the and bolt and swung the door open. The treasure of the heron tomb was within. Chance quietly slipped her glove off her hand, exposing the ring as she stepped into the room. There were fifty-three bags of gold within. As she turned, the door closed between her and the Breton on her side. It did not resemble a door anymore, but a wall. Walls beyond doors. For many days, Chance screamed and screamed as she tried to find a way out of the room. For some days after that, she listened dully to the laughter of Sher Gorof within her own head. Two months later, when Ulstir returned, she was dead. He used a rock to prop open the door and remove the gold. And thank you for listening to your lovely host, Mirglaf, narrate... Chances folly. Enjoy your evening.